So a while ago on the channel we looked at a Linux distribution called Ferran OS. And I think now, since it's the five year anniversary of Ferran OS, it's about time we took another look at it. So today on the Linux Lounge we're going to be looking at the Ferran OS July snapshot. Right now on the Linux Lounge. So indeed today we're going to be taking a look at Ferran OS. This is the first thing that you see when you install Farron OS, which might seem a little bit unusual for most Linux distributions, but we'll get on with that in a minute. First, I just want to congratulate the Farron OS dev for five years of Farron OS. Truly, every one of those five years has been worth it because this is an amazing Linux distribution and it really has come into its own over these five years. But now I'm getting on to reviewing it. As I said, this is the first thing that you see when you install Farron OS. When you install it from the live CD, the live CD installer doesn't ask for any information at all. And actually, this is based on Ubuntu, so the installer that Farron OS uses is quite unusual. It actually uses Calamaras, which a lot of other Linux distributions use. Although I say it's based on Ubuntu, but it really is coming into its own now, because it's now sort of pseudo rolling release, which Ubuntu isn't. Now, the interesting thing about the installer is it doesn't ask you for any information when you actually install from the live CD. It instead asks you to put in your information after installation. Now, this is really handy, and I wish more Linux distributions would do this, because what it means is you can install this on a friend or family member's machine who's not necessarily super tech savvy, and then you can just give it over to them and they can put in their own information, which is really handy. So we're just going to go ahead and do that and then get a few things set up and I will see you in a minute to take a look at the Ferran OS desktop experience and all that sort of thing. And here we are on the Ferran OS desktop. As you can see it looks really nice. Now I've got to admit to making a bit of a blunder. Once I finished the setup it prompted me with a welcome screen. And essentially this was a really really nice welcome screen. It detected I was running in a virtual machine so it prompted me to install the virtual machine add-ons which due to the program that I'm using won't work, but that's really handy. Um, it asked me how I wanted my system set up, what theme I wanted to use, what layout I wanted to use, that sort of thing. Now, I saw this icon on the desktop called Welcome Screen, so I assumed that uh, that was the program that was running once I first set the system up. Apparently it's not, and I now can't get back into that Welcome Screen to show it to you, unfortunately. Um, but this Welcome Screen is actually really nice in itself. Also, the second thing I want to just quickly apologize for is, unfortunately, yes, this is in 4x3. And the reason being, if I try to change the resolution to 1080p, it'll do it, but then it'll go right back. I'm not sure if that's an issue with Ferran OS or if that's an issue with the virtual machine program I'm using. I don't know. It's not the first distribution I've seen to do it, but you're going to have to bear with me. Unfortunately, this review is going to be done in 4x3. I'll try and make it look as good as possible, but I can only go so far, I guess. But yeah, this is Baron OS, and this is the result of five years. And I've got to say, having messed around with it a little bit, I'm very, very impressed. Now, the first thing of note about this sort of new Baron OS since the last time we looked at it is it's using KDE Plasma but it's also using quite a highly modified version of KDE Plasma, and I've got to say, I really like what they've done with it. As you can see, everything is nice and themed, and to be honest, upon first look, I would have never really guessed that this is KDE Plasma. Even the file manager is still using the Cinnamon file manager. So I've got to say, I really like what Ferran have done with KDE Plasma. They've also replaced the application launcher, which, I've got to say I'm not like a huge fan of this one, but I've got to say it is probably better than the default KD Plasma uh, application launcher. Now, this sort of distribution is meant for more new users or it's supposed to be easier to use, and I've got to say they've really gone a, thought, like, a long way to make that happen. The first thing is, as I mentioned earlier, the welcome screen. It's really handy. Like you could install the operating system and then launch this and it'll give you a nice introduction explaining everything. It'll give you your features, that sort of thing. And it will also tell you, you know, how you get started with stuff. And I think this is really handy for new users is it'll give you a list of recommendations for things you might want to install. And the gaming stuff is at the top, so that's quite interesting. Ferran seems to be sort of leaning on to supporting 
game as it will come over from Windows, which is probably quite a good choice since, you know, there are a lot of games that's coming over at the moment and I can see them being interested in Ferran OS. Also, there's an online store community, get involved and donate. You can also install software, there's two ways to do that, and you can restore the default settings if you break something. Also, there's links to Ferran OS's Twitter, Discord community, GitHub and GitLab. The uh, Discord might be handy if you need support or something. And I have seen it and it looks like a nice Discord server. Now, as for the stuff that's on the desktop, you can send feedback or report an issue, very handy. So they're not collecting your data or anything, but if you optionally want to give them some information, you can do that, which I think is a model that a lot of open source projects should adopt. You can also change the global theme. Now this is pretty nice, you can pick from all these uh, default themes. So let's say we want fair and grey dark, because I am quite a lover of dark themes. Well, if we click that, everything has changed. And yeah, that's a shortcut to a settings menu in the KDE uh, settings menu thing. They're all pretty nice defaults, so let's go ahead and see what fair and pink dark looks like. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, now this is kind of the main feature of Farron OS. You can, with one click, change the desktop to look like pretty much any other operating system, or like look and work like it even. Now in the past, I believe Farron OS had some custom software to do this, back when they were still using Cinnamon. But I can see exactly why they've made the switch over to Plasma, because Plasma does this stuff, well, using its own software. So for instance, let's say we want to make Farron OS look a little bit Mac-like. Well, let's set it to Cupertino. And as you can see, we now have a dock and a taskbar. Now I want to see something. Um, do they or do they not have a sort of global menu like Mac OS? And the answer to that is yes they do. And I really like KDE for its global menu. So let's just go ahead and close out of that. And let's change it back to the default because I want to talk about the default layout a bit. Now I've got to say, Ferran OS's default layout, I'm actually quite a big fan of that as well. You've got your time up here and you've got notifications, which apparently it's not available, I'm not sure what that's to do with. And interestingly, you actually get your sort of desktop, or your taskbar icons rather, in the middle. Now, this seems like a weird choice, but having used a similar thing for quite a while myself, I've gotta say, this really works, because your sort of mouse has to move less. Also on like higher resolution displays, getting to those icons if they were at the far left of the screen would be a pain, so I've gotta say, this is a really good way of doing things. So I would say that's probably um, the main things about the default Ferran OS desktop experience. It's really nice, really easy to get everything set up how you want. There's a lot of various different defaults you can use. So if you're not super familiar with Linux, there's probably a Ferran OS default that's right for you. And everything does look really nice. As you can see, there's this sort of Ferran OS icon theme to everything. All looks really nice and polished. So I've got to say, I really like the Ferran OS desktop experience. So now let's talk about what kind of applications and software you get with Ferran OS. Well, on the taskbar, you can see we have a store, a file manager, and Vivaldi. That's pretty good things to put in the face of a new user that's just booted the operating system up for the first time. Now, as you can see, we've got a store, and let's see what store that is. I don't know, it's like branded as a Ferran OS store, but I've definitely seen this store before, but I believe Ferran is actually working on their own store. But you know, it works fairly well, and a new user would easily be able to use this to get the software that they need. You get your file manager, which is not Dolphin, which is quite bizarre for Plasma, but I think that's a good choice. And you've got a web browser choice that, like by default, I find it to be a little bit questionable that they use Vivaldi. It's a very nice web browser, but I wouldn't say it's the most user-friendly, although it is very powerful, I will say that much. I have to say, I would have probably have gone with something like Firefox or Chrome by default. And I also think that because Vivaldi isn't open source, that might have some people, you know, turning their nose up at it, but it's an alright uh, inclusion by default, and it does work well as a web browser. And I believe I just noticed something that I didn't notice earlier. The default search engine is actually DuckDuckGo, which that is a good choice. 
Um, if we go into our applications launcher, you can see we've got like LibreOffice, we've got Critter. Now, I feel like including an image editor, like a heavy one, is most of the time below. But what I will say is that Critter is vastly better than the GNU image manipulation program, so I think that's a good choice to include. You got Ocular, a photos viewer, um, which fairly standard photos viewer. You get uh, a simple scan, which is pretty standard. You get Geary for your email, and this is something that I really like about Farron OS. They have their own sort of little fork of KDE Connect that comes with Farron OS by default. Now I can see this as being like a huge selling point for you know new users coming over from Windows. You can very easily connect your phone to your computer and sort of you know use it to transfer files, data. You know you can use it to control your uh, computer from your phone to some extent. You can use it to get calls and texts on your computer. It's really handy, and I think more distribution should come with KDE Connect by default. To be honest, you get Remina, which is a remote desktop client. So in case you need, you know, any remote support or anything, and this is pretty cool. You get a web browser chooser. Now, this gives you a list of web browsers that you can, you know, one-click install. So, say for example, you don't like Vivaldi and you want, for instance, Firefox, we can just go ahead and click install. And it's pretty cool, like just the sheer variety of browsers they have here. You can install Brave, Opera, Chromium, like even Chrome. And at some point, they're going to be supporting Edge, which I really like this program. It's very handy. Um, if we keep going in multimedia, you get Cheese and VLC, good choices. In Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite, which is a must-have for any distribution. And in the settings, you get disks, you get a firewall configuration tool, which, yeah, kind of does what it says on the tin. You get a Cavantum, interestingly enough, so I'm assuming that by running this in a virtual machine, I may not be seeing the full Farron OS theming. But Cavantum is a great thing to include by default and really makes Plasma look fantastic if you get it set up properly. You get some login window settings, you get your software sources, which is probably just standard Ubuntu stuff, but it's all fair and themed, which is cool. You get the store, you get the Synaptic Package Manager, in case you're a little bit old school with how you like to use things. You get, of course, your um, standard Plasma settings, which I just want to show this. I think the only problem I would have with giving Plasma to a new user is stuff that, like, stuff does tend to be a little bit all over the place as you can kind of see, but it's not too bad. But of course, it's not as simple as say, you know, the GNOME settings or something. And you get the Update Manager, which is the Linux Mint Update Manager, which is a fantastic choice. If we keep going through in the utilities, you can see, you know, it's all the standard stuff. And just because it's not a Linux distribution review without looking at the wallpapers, let's go ahead and quickly do that. And as you can see, they're all very nice. And I think this is a great wallpaper to just kind of leave on. Five years of Farron OS, which is kind of what this video is celebrating. But as you can see, there's a lot of backgrounds. So all in all, that's my quick look at Farron OS after all these... Well, I think it was a few months ago that I made the last uh, review of Farron OS. But as you can see, it's really come on uh, like during that time. And I've got to say, Farron OS is a fantastic Linux distribution that's been worth every single one of those five years to get it developed. And I've got to say, I would highly recommend this to anyone who likes the look of what we've got here. And I'm certainly going to be looking at it again in the future. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed this look at Farron OS. Definitely, definitely go and give it a look. Support Farron OS however you can. But with that said, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.